on your newly updated Nexus. Open the camera. Switch to lens blur. Frame your objects in the frame. Like so. Click and then move along the arrow and that's it it's going to take some seconds to process the image and then it's going to render the blur effect you see see the carpet getting blurred in the background it's clear in front but then you can go into this editor here where you can edit the blur levels and increase it that's too much and then you can decrease it a little let's leave it somewhere here yeah yeah this seems fine done now you can quit the camera open a browser chromeworks i've already called it book bookmark basically you have to go to this site called depthy.me is one big button open photo browse documents there it is open and you can drag to move the 3d image you can see there's a very slight movement there if you click on this image one there that's called image settings image properties and it will extract the depth map from the image so you can save it by click on it what the nexus does is it writes the step map into the image file so right now this is the only way i know of to extract the depth map the separate image and then you can download the sharp image as well This image is a sharp image, it doesn't have any blur effects on it. Downloads completed. Then in the share option you can create a analog 3D, create a GIF, create a video. To create a video you have options like standard, large, small, tiny. This is what you see, you get a little preview. For our exercise we don't need this, I'm just showing you all these settings. And the same thing with GIF. You get three sizes and you can do some customization. Mm. But you can play with these on your own. I don't think I need to show these to you for this tutorial. So that's it. Now on the computer, so you've got three images. I'm going to open Blender. Blender is a free open source 3D software. This is Blender 2.70. Delete the cube. Shift A. Create a plane. Roughly scale it so that it matches the proportions of your photograph. My photographs are wired along the x axis. Like that. That's about right. This doesn't need to be that accurate. 
then create a new material and name it something sensible so that we know what it's doing so this is the material that will give the color to the object so that you will see the actual globe, carpet, everything on the plane so this will use the ordinary photograph, the sharp one without the blur effect on it and we'll reduce the specular so that that reflection is not there that will be below either here yeah. add a texture to it this is the texture that will be shown seen on the image come in view yeah this is the one this is the one with the blur this is the other one we need sharp image it's not going to show here until we map it with UVs mm, that comes here UV we still it's still not going to show it even though you're needing texture you have to go to the UV editing mode and apply it over here so we're going to top view oh we need to subdivide the mesh so that we can deform it later before we unwrap we just Subdivide, 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 subdivide. That should be enough. Okay. Now select the whole thing, unwrap using the project from view. The project from view, you're going to get it there. Now we need to open the image. It's already here because we loaded it as a material. And we just need to make this mesh fit that image this will take some time because it's a heavy mesh and I've got a video capture running so it's going to be a bit slow and sluggish for the purposes of the tutorial I'm going to do it pretty rough but you need to do it as accurately as possible It all depends on what you want to do. Looks like this is it. Now let's move it up a bit. And yeah, that should be enough. Now I need a texture more. There we go. It's mapped onto the 3D plane. Now we go back to default mode. Save the file because if it crashes, you have to do that mapping all over again. It will be a pain. Now we we'll go to the spanner, which gives you spanner or wrench, I guess you call it. Add the displace modifier. This lets you load a texture, which will so it will displace the check based on the information in the texture. If you add it right now, it's just going to use the color image. No, it's not using color, it's just you created a new texture which is just noise. So we're going to find the texture. Yeah, this is the one we don't need this. So it's not noise, it's clouds. So here we're going to name this something meaningful again. This is the texture that will deform. Instead of clouds, we add not this one, sorry. Uh, we need to add here oh I get it this is the wrong map up supposed to be image map not environment okay and then we can open and add that black and white ghostly thing and as you can see it's already doing something it's excluding a negative so the globe and box have gone down inside the carpet has come up this will do a little mapping so that it's more accurate. Let me just find that. So basically, you need to apply UV mapping to the grey thing also. So that oh yeah, you do it in the modifier itself. It's 
for local say UV and as you can see it just matches correctly now it's just that it's doing the opposite of what you want so we just reverse it reverse the strength to negative so that the globe is the one that pops out and that's pretty much it now it's a bit rough along the edges it's got jagged lines so we don't want that so we're going to add another modifier subdivision subdivision surface which will smoothen it out yeah that's good enough save the file now as you can see it's tilted backwards which is the way it was set up again see it's at an angle so we need to straighten it out a bit yeah that's good and we're done let's just save the file close blender open your browser go to sketchfab.com you need to use a browser that supports WebGL so the new Opera, Chrome, Safari something like that and the I is a pain, don't use I for this go to globe, now we need to zip all the necessary files together so we'll just select the ghostly depth map the still image and the model, zip them no 3D, no upload, continue, give it a name, make it a public model, it's a very lightweight file that's why it's going up so fast, give it a sensible description, doesn't have to be with a Nexus device, you can use the Nexus's camera app on any other compatible device. Technically this is a lot like 3D scanning, it is 3D scanning only it's not as accurate. That's good enough for a mobile phone, I guess. At least on Android, this is one of the best ways I've found to do it. So here you go. And it's looking a bit dull. So that's because it's got lighting in here. So we need to go and disable that lighting. Because the lighting in the 3D world is going to be a lot duller than the real world lighting was when we captured the image. So we just make it shadeless so that it just sort of glows with its own image quality. There's no lighting, there's no shadows being cast in the 3D world. To darken it. Yeah. There you go. 3D scan from an axis using a depth. Share it. And there's a embed code which works on a few websites anyway. It works on Blogger. And that's it. Thank you for watching.